I'm here to scan Trix, one of the best preserved Tyrannosaurus Rex in the world using the portal cam, to see if, as many are saying, this is a revolution in capturing reality. During this video I will guide you through some of the key features and differentiators of this scanner equipped with a LiDAR and four cameras. I will show you how the portal cam works while I scan this massive dinosaur, my monopod and a real-time display powered by the Xgrids app. We will look at LCC Studio, Xgrids processing software to see how the final result turned out and the many more interesting things you can do with it. Are you ready? Let's go! Let's start with a quick overview of the product specification and what comes in the box. Now, as a disclaimer, Xgrid has sent me the portal cam, but what you will hear is just my honest opinion based on what I've learned from these scans that you are about to see. The portal cam comes inside a hard case. Inside, you can find, of course, the battery. And you can see uh, here that by pushing this button, this informs you about the level of charge of the battery. And also, of course, a power adapter uh, with a USB-C from one side and depending on the plug that you have. Uh, and of course, there is the portal cam. The portal cam comes mounted on top of this tripod that you can screw or unscrew and it helps you to keep the portal cam on a flat surface when you're not using it. And it fits well inside the hard case and it has also this silicon rubber material that you can use to protect it in case you're not using it or even when it is inside the box. Of course, you get also some other things, a shoulder strap, a USB-C cable that you can use to transfer data or a charger battery, and a cloth for cleaning up the lenses. So the portal cam is also this uh, little rubber piece that you can remove to attach uh, a phone while you are scanning to have a view of basically the uh, app, the scanning app, and to insert the battery, you just go here, need to pull in this little clip, and then it slides right in. By pushing, you get a level of charge, and then by double pushing, that's the moment, and it will turn on. Once the light turns green, that's the moment that it's ready to go. When it comes to the product specification, the portal cam is around 870 gram, and it is pretty small and portable in a way compared to many other 3D scanners, uh, and is made on this aerospace grade aluminum alloy, making it feel sturdy. It is equipped with a USB 3.0 that is used to transfer data uh, directly to your computer, has an internal storage of 512 gigabyte that we will see if it is enough to, uh, for the big scans that you can make. It has a GPS module, Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth that allows the connection with the LCC app that allows you to view in real time how your scan is progressing, something that I'm going to show you later. When it comes to battery, it has a removable uh, lithium battery that lasts based on uh, their promise around 60 minutes of continuous scanning. Not sure if that's gonna be the case, we're gonna put it to the test. It goes up to zero to a full charge in one and a half hour and those batteries can be swappable even though just one comes inside the box. The LiDAR scanner is one of the core value of the x -Creed when combined with the extra cameras. It has a class one, a LiDAR scanner that means that it's not harmful to skin or eyes and a scanning range that ranges from 10 centimeters to 30 meters at a 10% reflectivity. This means that more reflective surfaces might have an even bigger range but this is let's say from the conservative side and it has a point rate of 856,000 points per second. The portal cam has a four camera array, two fish eyes on the sides and two on the front. The image resolution is 4000 by 300 pixel and the sensor size is half inch. It has a rolling shutter and the fisheye camera have, a, have an FOV of 200 by 200 degrees, while the front end camera 100 by 85 each. Let's take a break now because this array of sensors and cameras is the most important features of the portal cam and let me tell you why. Normally when you generate a gaussian platin model with just pictures taken from a camera or the extracted frames from a video, you first have to run a structure for motion pipeline using tools like for example CodeMap to take all your images, find features matches and then capture the relative camera poses. Only after that you can reconstruct geometry and start turning the data into splat. 
This process is computationally heavy and error prone, especially if your dataset has motion blur, textureless surfaces or poor lighting. The Portal Cam skips that whole process because it's using multi-slam and fusing data from four cameras and the LiDAR sensors. It knows exactly where it is in space, and while you are moving around, the LiDAR provides absolute depth and real-world scale, the cameras provide the appearance and view-dependent details, and the SLAM ties them all together into a consistent map. So instead of having to compute poses offline, your Gaussian splatting pipeline starts with geometry and camera spots that are already accurate. That's what makes the Portal Cam a big leap compared to workflows that run only on passive image capture. When you purchase the cam, you get, of course, the case uh, and the protective rubber insert, while instead other optional uh, ob objects like the extension pole, external storage or batteries are purchased separately. And now it's time to scan. I mounted the Portal Cam on a monopod and started scanning. I did two tests and each one took around 10 minutes. I did four passes at different heights and even tried to capture the reflective surfaces on which the information for the T-Rex were written. Now, while you scan in the app, you can have a preview of either the fisheye lens and the frontal view, and you can switch freely between one and the other. While scanning, you can see a point cloud also generated by the LiDAR scanner to help you get a better impression of the coverage. You can interact and switch and pan and go into different modes to give you a broader perspective of how you have been scanning the scene. The two test scans took around 23 minutes, and at the end I still had 65% of battery left. This means that you can scan quite a lot, even just with one of the battery provided in the basic pack. After scanning, it was time to pack my stuff, of course thank the staff and the communication department that allow me to capture such a magnificent beast, and then go back home and start processing. As I was saying, the camera has a built-in storage of 512 gigabytes, and roughly each one of the scans that lasted the 11-12 minutes was 5 gigabytes, and I was quite impressed. I was expecting a bigger file size, and sometimes you just get bigger files just from a video capture. After opening the LCC app, you can import the file, change a few settings, but honestly, it doesn't provide the same level of control you can expect from a tool like PostShot, uh, for example, the type of profile you want to use or the number of iteration. And there is also a very important thing to know here. So everything that you see is happening on your local PC. This means that unlike many other solutions, like for example, Luma back in the days, maybe Kiri Engine or others that offer this kind of Gaussian splatting creating features, Everything is happening locally, and so something that you own. I do have a pretty average 3060, uh, equipped also with 32 gigabyte of VRAM, and I was able to go through the entire scanning process. Now, if you wanna know more about some of these apps, I made a pretty thorough comparison, showing some of the output, the differences that you get in terms of size of the scan, quality, as well as the file size, and you can check in a video that you can see down in the description. You do, you can change, for example, the reconstruction setting between fast, standard and slow, where slow is apparently the recommended. Now, what you can also do is add this HD enhancement. But here, unfortunately, I was not able to test it out because apparently I need a better graphic card. Now, that being said, we can just add a name to our scan and select one of the scans and then we are good to go. I let it go overnight, so I am not sure how long it took, but I suppose that that time is also depending on the settings that you have set as well as the specification of your PC. Though I'm really looking forward to see how that turned out, how big is the file, how many splat, let's check it out. And here it is, whoa. Now, whenever you look at this, it's always a bit like magical to see reality captured and brought back inside your screen so vividly. So you see here that we can check some of the fine detail, for example, here the skull. So the skull is nice, it's okay, and especially if you see from a certain distance, but when you go up close, I think that that could be something better. And the reason for this is likely because the maximum, the closest that I could get to the, uh, to the head and to many other parts of the dinosaurs uh, was just by the edge, here where you see. So let me show you maybe how to activate a different path. And then you see that each one of these lines represent one of the paths that I took with one, two, three, and four passes at different height. 
And due to the laser that were present at the edge, uh, all around it, to prevent from visitors and guests to um, cross that line and get too close to the uh, dinosaur, that's just the closest I could get. The only ex exception is this side here, where I got particularly close. So let's see if this is any better. And I do think that here looks a bit more defined, to be honest. So this section here. The top of the, sin the dinosaur is also pretty well reconstructed, despite the monopod was not full length, let's say. And you can clearly see this, especially at the back, where I was struggling to get more details of the tail that was just humongous. Now, what we can also check is some of these notes here. Um, and yeah, you see the bigger text, it's kind of readable, not fully, but the small text is just too hard. Let me see maybe another one. And yeah, this is, wow. So, okay, this is just perfect. The one on top, you see, and some of section here in English are kind of readable, but not perfect again. So maybe an extra pass or maybe closer uh, might have made a difference. And what you can do here in the viewer is not much. As I say, you can switch from point clouds uh, to the standard view. Uh, you can change and highlight the scanning path and maybe do some measurement. If we instead double click on the, on the scene, that's the moment that we open the editor. Now in the editor, you can do a few other useful things. One being, for example, select a part of the scene. Let's, for example, try to select this bone here. We can use the brush tool. After we have selected it, you can see that, like many other of these Gaussian splatting tools, it just doesn't work to select a volume. It selects everything that is in the path of your selection. So you need always to remove the selection. In this case, I'm holding the control key to remove this selection. And that's it. We can do different things with the selection. We can, for example, change the color and brightness of that part, contrast and saturation, and we can, of course, also delete it. And that is quite clean. Now, what we can also do when we are in here, we can, for example, add some notes. Like, for example, this part of the dinosaur was actually casted. And that's it. So these notes can be left on a scene. And of course, you also have the chance now to take some measurement, either area or distance. So we can see how this works. And the measure is now anchored to the scene. You can also go and set up an avatar going around the scene, especially if you set the collision right. So at this stage, you can move around the scene having this avatar and walk around and explore the scene in 3D. Now, what you can also do is that you can create a video from your setup. So you could, for example, set some keyframes. And play out the animation and export it as a video file. You can go up and then start selecting, for example, only a region of the scan and then start cleaning it up by selecting with this rectangle tool. Now, what happens is that since this is not perfectly aligned, then you will have to do some different tricks uh, to get it right. And yeah, I just don't think it is super handy or as e easy as I wish it would be. I'm not a big fan of the editing feature of the LCC app. Maybe because I'm more familiar in Super Splat, there I have more flexibility and I feel it's more user-friendly when it comes to editing, cleaning, rotating the whole scene. Also, at this point, we still don't know how many Splat this is, how many megabytes. So let's bring it to Super Splat, clean it up, and then I'm also going to show you how you can view it on a Quest or a Vision Pro. 
So within the LCC app and service, you also get the chance to publish directly online. You can do so, select even a random or a custom URL and protect that access via password. Now, you have the option to choose among different servers based on where you are located and then share it and publish online. You can also, of course, go out and export to see how big this file turned out, how many splats and clean it up a bit. When you export, you can export in different format, being the LCC format, as well as the PLY and USDC. You can even attach the collision mesh that can be handy in case of different application. The raw capture directly from the LCC app is just 87 megabytes, and that's pretty crazy. Let's check how many splat that is. So on super splat, we can rotate and adjust the scan just for peace of mind. And let's see, by clicking here, we can get the splat and it's 1,300,000 splats right here. That's a bit crazy. Like 1.3 million splat and just 87 megabytes. I don't know what's going on. There must be some crazy magic happening here, um, but that's pretty impressive. So let's now clean up the splat and I'm going to show you how you can view it on a Quest or a Vision Pro. And probably this is the best moment to let you know that if you don't only like ocean splatting but are curious how you could experience it at full scale in VR on a Quest or a Vision Pro, I have created a list of tools and apps that allow you to do just that. It comes along with my weekly newsletter where I interview founders and creative who are shaping the future of XR and AI. Just subscribe to the newsletter and you will get it directly in your inbox. After the editing, where do we end it up? Well, not major decrease in the sense, like we still had 1 million. So we just remove around 300,000 splats. And so here we are. Let me show you how to publish it and view it in VR. When you are within super splat, you can go to file, publish, and here you have several options, like for example, the number of harmonics that you want to save that are responsible for the viewer dependency effect. And you can also choose the file format. You can choose between SOG and compressed PLY. SOG is a fairly new format that leads to an even more compression without losing quality. I strongly recommend to give it a shot. So let's publish. And so here you have it. After it's published on Super Splat as SOG file, we got just 11.5 megabytes. And that's actually insane. If you think that this scan is more than 1 million splat, I just cannot believe it still. And now that we have done some cleaning and compression, viewing tricks on a VR device is super easy and works both on Quest and Vision Pro. You can either type the URL or what I prefer is connect your laptop and PC to the same network of the headset and use hmd.link. You can copy paste the link from phone or desktop and then paste it directly in hmd.link. The link will appear automatically in your headset as well. Once you are on a quest, you have the choice to experience the splat in VR or mixed reality. You can navigate your scene using the teleport button and move around, but the navigation capabilities are still limited as you cannot snap turn or resize the splat. I've been told by the people at Super Splat that they are working hard to improve the VR viewer, so expect some improvements very soon. And so what is my experience with the Portal Cam? It is a very, very solid scanner. I have to be honest, I don't have other experience with other type of scanners and to have a thorough comparison, I would need to do more scans and uh, probably compare different methods like for example capturing with a camera maybe also going outdoor that is something that i didn't have the chance to try yet on the other hand for what i have experienced the results are absolutely stunning and you have seen it some of the portion of the model might not be as detailed as i wished but that was probably because i was not close enough for the reason that i've already explained to you the other thing that was shocking for me was about the file size and just the quality that you get for just this 10 minute scan. So when you compare the amount of capture and the quality you will get for the time and effort you spend, I think this is probably one of the best value that you could get. Now, it is still cost $5,000 on the market. So it is not something that anybody would probably just buy as a hobby. And I see this certainly more for prosumers. That being said, there is still a lot that needs to be tested with different scans, outdoor and indoor and comparison probably with other methods. So let me know in case you would like to see more of it. 
I hope you enjoyed this review and don't forget, if you enjoy this type of content, remember to subscribe to the channel and also check out my newsletter. Bye bye.